Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the next session uh, in the Welcome to Advances in Research and Innovation stream of the SNOMED CT Expo 2023. My name is Terence Sherd. I'm the Technical Operations Manager for SNOMED International, and I'm moderating today's session. All questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, online attendees, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your toolbar if you wish to ask any questions. Those in the room will be able to use the microphone situated at the back of the room behind the camera to ask your questions in the room. I'm now pleased to uh, introduce Kwa Ngo from the Australian eHealth Research Centre, uh, Syro, who will be presenting OntoGPT, a natural language interface for SNOMED CT via a FHIR terminology server. Hua, please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Hua. I am a research scientist working at the Australian eHealth Research Centre. Today, I'm going to present my work on TOGPT, a natural language interface for SNOMED CT via FI terminology server. In this work, we demonstrate how to use large language models and deep learning techniques to create natural language interface for our onto server terminology system. This innovative approach will enhance the user experience when searching for a clinical term. Let's start with a typical annotation scenario where terminologists annotate an unstructured clinical note using SNOMED concepts. As they review the note, they can highlight span of text and that relevant to the clinical findings, body structure, or procedures. Some of these highlights are made with high confidence, while the other are less certain. The next objective is to locate the corresponding SNOMED IDs for those highlight texts. The SNOMED City Browser is good at concept ID searching for a given text. However, there are cases where it may not provide the desired assistance. In the first example, different results are found for the abbreviation PCI. In fact, its meaning depends on the context using this term. In the second example, no result is found for blurry vision, which underscores the need of searching not only by keywords, but also by meaning of the query. This leads us to our primary motivations. First, how can we decode an abbreviation's meaning based on its contextual surrounding? Second, how can we perform semantic searches, which involve searching by the meaning of the query? Third, how can we get more detail of any given terms to validate our understanding of it? Let's now explore some demonstration of our ontogpt tool. In the first demo, we ask ontogpt to clarify all the abbreviations in the first sentence of the clinical note. Thanks to the powerful language understanding capability of the GPT-3, all the abbreviations were decoded successfully. Now we understand that PMH stands for Past Medical History. PCI refers to procedure called percutaneous coronary intervention, and other abbreviations denote various types of clinical finding. Let's ask ontogpt to retrieve SNOMED ID for some of those terms. Here we can find concept ID for diabetes mellitus and PCI, which is the percutaneous coronary interventions. These two searches are straightforward as the result and queries are identical. Recall that the SNOMED CT browser was unable to retrieve any result for blurry vision. First, we can request ontogpt to provide a brief description of this term. Next, we can instruct our onto server to discover an equivalent SNOMED code and its associated uh, finding site property. 
This allows us to confirm that blurry vision can be annotated as blurry visual image with the ID 11151608. We can also explore additional information related to any SNOMED concept, including its definitive status, hierarchy structure, and alternative labels. These results are obtained by calling the relevant API functions within our onto server terminology system. We can apply this, the same approach to other highlight terms. The generic chat feature allows us to uh, inquire about various aspects of the clinical terms. For instance, we can seek potential abbreviation of the cerebrovascular accident. Alternatively, we can ask the ontogpt to retrieve results specifically within the SNOMED CT domain. As an example, we can get finding size and associated morphology attributes of cerebrovascular accident. Now let's watch the video recording of the entire demonstration with Onto GPT.
Now let's discuss about technical side of the Onto GPT. Here is the diagram and outlining the key components within Onto GPT. The primary components are represented in bold rectangle shape, while the library and technology used to build them are depicted in the gray dash shape. Input can take the form of either voice or text. In case of the voice question, the speech-to-text component powered by OpenAI Whisper library converts into textual format. Textual question pass through the text-to-structure component, which identify the structure of the command corresponding to the ontogpt function being called. Here, we refine GPT-3 to translate text question into structure commands. The function half component then dispatches the translated command to one of four modules, semantic search, file operation, SNOMED ECL queries, or chat service. On the server backend comp comprise a semantic search engine, file API, and ECL engine. The ability to comprehend text in natural language is one of the most significant feature of large language model. Based on the pre-trained GPT-3 model, we have customized it into a line with our specific requirements. In this demo version, we categorize a user question into 10 types of command. The component text to structure placed at the translator from unstructured text into predefined structure commands, including general chat, semantic search, and file lookup operation. To distinguish the uh, general chat versus the seeking information from the onto server, we add a perfect onto server as like people call like Alexa or Hi Google. For example, when user types on the server, what is the fighting side of the lump of mouth? The text structure know that is the question to on the server to find an appropriate value for finding side attribute of the given term lump of mouth. In addition to the semantic search, the text to structure can detect file lookup operation that can provide more information about given SNOMED concept. The strength of our semantic search lies in its ability to understand the meaning of concept and their associated clinical attributes. Hence, even if the query text is not indexed in the onto server database, the semantic search engine can identify the most relevant result for that text, including its clinical attributes. The onto GPT, which is built on the semantic search engine supports various types of query. However, in this demo version, we have Fitune GPT-3 within the text-to-structure component to support four specific types of query, including searching SNOMED concept that is close meaning to the given query term, find SNOMED concept that is the value for finding side property of the given term, which specify the body side affected by the condition. Find SNOMED concept that is a value for associated morphology property of the given term, which specify the morphologic change that are characteristic feature of the disease. Find a SNOMED concept that is the value for causative agent property of the given term. If semantic search returns a SNOMED code for a given query, file operation explore this code further in SNOMED city to obtain additional information. On the server offer a wide range of file API of function for working with various features of concept in terminology system. In our demo version, we have file to GPT-3 within the text to structure component to recognize lookup operation for retrieving fundamental feature of a given concept. The file lookup operation is indeed represented as a RESTful API function. Therefore, in this step, we simply map the property extracted from the user query to the corresponding parameter in the lookup REST query. 
This is an additional slide to whom who interested in how we design our superstitious engine for Snowmass City. Essentially, we have fine-tuned BioBird using contrastive learning technique. The aim is of this fine-tuned uh, this fine process is uh, are twofold. First, is align the embedding vector of similar concept, bringing them close together within the embedding space. Second, if a user searches for the values of clinical attributes associated with the term, it jointly projects both the query and attribute into its embedding vector space and then identify the concept closest to this embedding vector. The chain intercept will mining from Snowmass City. Thank you for listening. Now it's time for the question and answering. Thank you very much, Hua. Um, I'm glad to say that um, Hua is actually joining us remotely and uh, we'll be able to answer questions online. And we've also got Michael Lawley here from Syro as well to, to answer questions in the room. So again, those uh, anyone online, please use the Q&A function to ask questions. Anyone in the room, if you want to step up to the mic behind the uh, camera there to ask any questions, uh, that will be uh, be very good. Thank you very much, Wa. We... Okay, yes, Kimwa. Well. Um, so my, I have two questions. First one is, any evaluation of, of your onto server, I mean, in, in, uh, uh, in any way. And the second question is whether you have um, considered uh, fine tuning your onto uh, uh, searcher with some clinical texts, I mean, to enhance this improve uh, performance. I'm sorry, could you please repeat the first question? I'm not- uh, Evaluation, clear. evaluation of the performance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's two type of evaluation. The first evaluation is about the septic shirts because you can see that the the main thing is about septic shirts. The other, like uh, ECL engine or fire operation, is based on the auto server engine. So we do not do evaluation for that. But for the septic shirts, we have published several paper um, for this work and uh, uh, our fine tune from BioBird with the uh, facility shirt is pretty good, uh, much better than the other baseline. So we are still using it for some annotation test, uh, test in our team. Yeah. The number you can see in the paper because it depends on the different type of the data set, but basically uh, for, for example, with the HPO mapping to the SNOMED, for the clinical finding term, we get about, I think about even 90, more than 90% is quite good, yep. And for the second question, uh, sorry, I forgot it. Uh, can can you say tuning your search? Yeah. Fine tuning, fine -tuning. additional uh, clinical or uh, corpus or, or medical literature? Yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it depends on what we want to do. If you want to do just for the finding the equivalent, so you can see the other resource, like you have the mapping between ontology or you can use some uh, using the GPT-4, GPT-3 to generate a synonym of term. But if you want to uh, work on finding the value of the clinical attribute, like finding size or associated morphology, so I believe that we have to rely on some knowledge graph and uh, we use Nomad for, for this work only. I cannot find the other resource. I can do which HPO, but uh, quite complicated. But yeah, for uh, we focus this work for Nomad. So for the uh, semantics with the clinical attribute, we use Nomad. And for the other like equivalent or similarity, we can use uh, many kind of the ontology, uh, not only from Nomad, but also HPO. FMA and NCIT to generate the training data. Okay, any other questions? Young? Um, many thanks for the presentation. It's very interesting to see that a powerful AI being applied in this search. Uh, I want to ask a very basic question, similar as uh, Kim Wan's first question. Uh, 
my question a little bit different. Just say, um, today, if you're looking for some city concept in the browser, you just type in the keywords, you try to find it. Quite often, these keywords may not appear on the, the concept actually you want to search to find out. Uh, I don't know if you have done any study, just do this basic search, uh, not complex like uh, give me the this condition, what is body structure, this like ECL type query. And uh, that means uh, really powerful. You can just say, people don't need to learn ECL, you can still do ECL query, use your natural language. But what I, my key, po key question here is, uh, I just want to find the concept and uh, compared to a normal standard browser search, what's the difference? Uh, how advanced this uh, search compared to normal one? Yeah, I think the, um, maybe I'm not not fully do investigation on different browser, different search browser, but but I think uh, most of them, right, at this time using a keyword searching based on the, the, the appearance of the query not by the meaning. And this is the weakness of them. So when people type something that not, maybe not exactly like prefix or not exactly the term in indexing a database, it cannot be found. So that's why we think semantic search by vector embedding, it could be uh, a good thing to additional for the traditional key searching. Thank you. Um, Oh, question for me. I mean, we've heard a lot at the conference the past few days about chat GPT. How is the technology different for what you're doing with Onto GPT? Uh, yes. So uh, you see in my demonstration, there is a function about the chat service. So the chat service can reply, can uh, give the answer for kind of generic, generic question for the user. And uh, in our system, we also are not using another thing from OpenAI with the uh, GPG-3, actually is the GPG-3 DaVinci Davin model because it's about the text completion. The text completion, that means that when you provide some input and we have some training data that expects some desired output, like in our case, when we pump some uh, input as a query, we expect the, the text structure identify what is the intent, what is the property, and what is the, the other value. And then we, based on this thing, we can do the other function for uh, go, go some the other function from auto server or from our simplicity shirt engine. So basically we used to think one for just generic chat thing, uh, like people you for chat GPT. Another thing we find to the GPT-3 DaVinci to get the, structure output from user query. Yeah. That's very good. Thank you. Well, any more questions before we conclude the session? One more? Yep. Hi, uh, thanks for your talk. Um, so I was wondering, um, as a follow up question to the questions before me, um, if you enter something like blurry vision into the Sonoma browser as it is currently, then uh, you actually don't get the result. So uh, recall, not so good, but precision is going to be pretty much 100% because once the cinema is in there, it's going to be a good match. But if you use something like ChatGPT, if you ask that, uh, what blurry vision is, um, then you will inevitably get some kind of hallucination. Have you experienced something like that? What's what's the most fun hallucination that you've got? Is uh, I okay. guess my question. That's a great question. <laughs> it's a good one because uh, it's a uh, the problem with the last language model hallucination. But uh, in our case, we do not rely on ChatGPT to provide the result. We provide on our simulation shows and the simulations based indexing from the SNOMED concept. So basically we rely on the SNOMED as a set, not from ChatGPT. We only provide for generic question like people try to understand what is the description or what's some, some kind of question not relevant to SNOMED city, then ChatGPT can provide the answer. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Hua. Uh, we can let you go to sleep now because I know it's really early in the morning where you are. And thank you very much for, for staying up for this. And thank you to Michael uh, for being on standby for us. So that concludes the session. And uh, those on you in line can uh, go back to the lobby to join the next session. And once again, thank you very much, Hua. Thank you, Michael. 
Thank you. Bye.